do you know what signs and circumstances are from God? And how do you make sense of all the things that happen in life, the good and the bad? This is session seven, where you will see how to correctly interpret signs and circumstances within your life. Welcome back. This is session seven, where we will be breaking down how to accurately interpret signs and circumstances. When hearing God and interpreting circumstances, it's important to look at this as a daily relationship with God, your daily relationship with God, look at it like a treasure hunt, like you're on a hunt for buried treasure, that it's this ever unfolding God mystery that you're looking for clues, you're looking for Jesus fingerprints, I call them. You become this spiritual detective. When detectives are looking to figure out, okay, who's been at the scene of this, of this crime, they look for fingerprints. So you want to look for Jesus fingerprints on the scenes of your everyday life. You want to see, look for and see God's activity. You also want to look at it as God interweaving this beautiful tapestry of signs and circumstances. It's a love language that he wants to develop with you. And it's very important. We're going to teach you how to accurately and correctly discern and look through the right lenses and the right filter of how to discern signs and circumstances. Also looking at this like a God-inspired and directed puzzle and, and again, a mystery. It's kind of like these, these, these breadcrumb trails, like a breadcrumb trails from heaven. You're following the breadcrumb trails. You're following this flow of, of themes and these trails of what I call kind of holy gross grace trails. You're following these themes that God is kind of doing and interweaving into your everyday life. And if you're not watchful, if you're not intentional, if you're not practicing spiritual and self-awareness, then you'll miss so many signs and circumstances and little God winks <laughs> that he wants to show you. <laughs> That's good. So I want you to think of yourself, you're on this hunt for for this buried or hidden treasure in your everyday life, and you're like a spiritual archaeologist <laughs> with your little magnifying glass and stuff, right? So knowing that signs and circumstances are invitations to investigate with God. I love what the Bible says. It says, it's the glory of the Lord to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search that matter out. It's the glory of God to conceal things that take faith. They take intentionality. They take love. They, they, they take a relational connectedness and you actually putting forth effort to actually connect with God and accurately interpret signs and circumstances that he is interweaving throughout your daily life. Again, it's a love language that God wants to develop with you. And if you know the right lenses and filters to look through, like God's goodness, then you'll be able to accurately interpret circumstances and signs. Because I will talk about this a little bit later, but I used to be the worst at interpreting signs and circumstances with God. I I was not accurate most of the time, and it led me to a lot of life wrecks. It led me to a lot of hurt and pain and, and just unwanted consequences in my life. And this session is going to help you not do that now and in the future. <laughs> That's good. Understand that God is the best coordinator, conductor, and confirmation specialist that you will ever see. He, will, he interweaves signs and circumstances into our lives in such great detail and great care. And what's so amazing is I'll see God speak to me through all these different signs and circumstances, and I'll be like, God, you're in the everyday. You're in the, such the minute detail it's absolutely amazing. Thank you for caring so much about me. It, it, it reminds me of how much God cares about me. We see him do this throughout the Bible, all these 
confirmations and signs we see throughout the Bible over hundreds of years before Jesus came, God had the people of Israel sacrificing at Passover a sacrificial lamb that would take away the sins of the people for that year. They would sacrifice this lamb, which was a picture of what Jesus was going to do. And he actually was sacrificed or gave up his life at the same exact time down to like the minute, <laughs> the time of the day, the actual day, the actual time of the day that they sacrificed, that they were sacrificing in the temple, the sacrificial land, the same time that Jesus was hanging on the cross, giving his life so we could receive redemption from our sins and receive the Holy Spirit within us. It's amazing that at that exact time, God interwove all these circumstances through hundreds of years to show people, hey, the picture of Passover, the picture of the sacrificial lamb, this circumstance sign is actually a shadow and a type of Jesus being our sacrificial lamb lamb, our savior. And so to me, it's so clear what God was saying through these circumstances. But some of the circumstances are much more subtle where you have to, what the Bible calls, have eyes to see and ears to hear them. Another one that I love is that in the Old Testament, God's presence, or I guess part of his presence, dwelt with the people in the temple of God. That that's where his presence dwelt. And it was a type and a shadow of us being the actual temple after Jesus lived, died, buried, and resurrected and gave us the Holy Spirit. And now we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Again, God interwove all these circumstances and signs over years to show us Jesus and to show us the reality of, hey, we're the temple of God now. We house his presence. We house the Holy Ghost. Like, that's super cool. Like, God that owns everything, that's massive and gigantic, his spirit can also live in each and every person. Seven billion people. If everybody wanted to get saved today, God wouldn't have any problems with that. He wants that. He says in his word, he wishes that none should perish without him, that all should have eternal life, that all should have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If he poured out his spirit on everybody right now, everybody just said, I'm receiving it. He'd have more than enough <laughs> for another 7 billion, 8 billion, 2 trillion. It doesn't matter. God is infinite and he chooses to live inside you and he chooses to interweave these signs and circumstances in the everyday, God is in the everyday. He's in the practical parts of your life. He's in the everyday of your life. And if you're not looking to the right filter, if you're not realizing that God speaks to you, you will miss such an amazing part of how he'll interweave the smallest little things just to wink at you, just to say, I love you, just to say, you're on the right track, just to encourage you like a loving father. It's so amazing. We need to understand some things, and when I say things, I mean truths. We need to understand some truths accurately and correctly to interpret signs and circumstances. Understand this, there is no such thing as luck or coincidence. And not everything that happens to you is God's will for your life. Again, let me say that again. Not everything that happens to you in your life is God's will for your life. And there is no such thing as luck and coincidence. How do I say that? There are four combinations of activities that you can boil it down to the very root cause because for every action, there's a reaction, correct? So that's that's even just practical science that we understand. It's like a law, the law of lift or the law of gravity. We understand for every reaction, there's a reaction. So when God showed me this, he said, Sterling, what is the root cause of all activity in life? And I said, I don't know, God. And he began to say, okay. And he broke down different things from my life and said, okay, what were the four activities or what were the activities that were here? And he showed me four activities, which I'm going to go over with you. So it's so under, uh, so important to understand when you're discerning 
signs and circumstances to begin to look through this measurement and filter to discern, and you'll need the Holy Spirit's help to discern what activities are at work in what signs and circumstances that you're experiencing. Because if you look through the wrong filter, you'll see the wrong thing. Let me say that again. If you look through the wrong filter, you'll see the wrong thing. There's so many times that I looked through the wrong filter in my life and I thought God was doing something to me because I used to think that everything that happened to you was God's will for your life. I was raised in a belief system, a Christian belief system that believes that everything that happens to you is God's will for your life. And that's just not the Bible. It's not God. It's not the case. We have a free moral agent. We have free will choice. So not everything that happens to you is God's will for your life. Number one, God's activity. God's activity towards us, which is for the development and the advancement of his love, joy, peace, healing, and grace in our lives. God's activity will always begin to call you. It's always to call you into deeper relational connectedness with himself. And so God's activity by nature is invitational, corrective, directive, and loving. Just like an actual loving father, that's an attribute of God that is corrective and directive like a father would be, like a, an effective father would be. Number two, our choices, actions or inactions, positively or negatively. So there's so many people that say, well, Sterling, I don't know why God's doing this in my life. And then I know them and I know, I know the decisions they've been making. And I'm like, hey, bro. I'm not trying to throw condemnation at you, but you're doing some things that are causing this. Like your actions are causing a reaction. God's not putting you through this. God's not taking you through this. You're putting yourself through this. <laughs> and I've got, the, I've got, believe me, I got, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir right now because I'm the same way. There's sometimes in my life, even now, I'll be like, man, why did that happen to me, Jesus? And he'll show me you. <laughs> You're why you, that happened to you. So I'm just saying it's, it's important to discern that. Not everything that happens to you is God's will for your life, like we said. Number three, the activity of the enemy against us, which is always to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said the enemy comes only to kill, steal, and destroy in John 10. And so any unforgiveness, pride, sickness, disease, shame, fear, depression, unworthiness, sins of all kinds, isolation, and just the world system, the evil part of the world system, those things all affect the way that we live and they affect circumstances. Number four, the choices of people around us, either their actions or their inactions for positive or for negative. So your life and the circumstances and signs you see are a combination of the four activities that we just covered. God, other people, you, and the demonic enemy that we face in the spiritual realm that's real. I want to give you an example that we can all understand. And from this example, you can deconstruct things and realize that, okay, I can obviously see the four levels of activity in the situation. So we can all agree child abuse and the abuse of a child is not a good thing. It's terrible. It's evil. So when a child gets abused in any way, shape, or form, what activities are at work in child abuse? Let's just say a sexual abuse. A child is sexually abused. Why am I using this? Because we can all relate to how terrible the situation is. And there's people that are watching this that have had abuse as a child sexually in other ways. So saying that, what four levels of activity were at work there? Well, there was a person who used their free will choice to abuse that child. So that, that other person, their activity for negative is involved in that. And then the devil influenced, demonic demons influenced that person. So their activity is at work. And that person agreed with the influence they were under. And through that influence, they acted upon the influence they were receiving. They have a free will choice to deny that influence, but they didn't. And then there, then so that's the activity that's at work in child abuse. 
Now your activity or the activity of the person being abused, they were, they were victimized in that situation. That doesn't mean you have to live as a victim, but that person was victimized. So they didn't have any activity in that except for they were being abused. God's activity in that was that he didn't want that to happen. It's not his will for people to do that to other people. What he was doing is comforting, and he was there with that person, any person who suffers abuse. He's with you in that moment, and even before that person started abusing you, he was actually trying to work and convict that person on the actions that were taken were going to lead to other children of his being hurt. So understand, that's how the four levels of activity in that one scenario work. Now, you can take that and recognize four levels of activity in other circumstances. I'm just giving you an extreme circumstance that unfortunately is a part of our our world, the world system and, and just the world that we live in, unfortunately. But it's something that we can understand and we need to understand that especially things like that that are very, very evil and negative that happen to people that are that are innocent, that's not God's will for their lives. So I want you to keep it's vital to keep these four activities in mind when discerning your signs and circumstances that you get. And it's, a, a, it's so important to look through an accurate filter of God being good, God being a father, God being love, and keep in mind the activities of God and how, and how good he is, how he wants to call you in a deeper relationship. How it's, If you're experiencing anything good, the Bible says, all good and perfect gifts, the Bible says, come from the Father above down to you. So if you're experiencing anything good, it's Jesus. <laughs> I used to be so confused in my life, and it was, it was as if I was in a dim lit room, and I was bumping my knee and stubbing my toe and all these different things, and all I had to do was flip the light on and begin to see in the right light, meaning the right filter, the right light, the right understanding. But I kept, I didn't know how to properly and accurately interpret the signs and circumstances that were happening in my life because I had the wrong filter. I thought that God was testing me. I thought God was, I would hear so many times, oh, God, just doing that to build your faith. But it was something negative that no loving father would do. I know it's not God. But my filter and the lens I was looking through and what people were telling me, I was hearing God's doing this to you. Perfect example, when I lost my NFL career due to injury, people said, oh, brother, God's just got another plan for your life. Well, all I heard in my religious thinking, in the way I grew up and what I was taught, all I heard was God broke my foot and took my dream away from me. Does that sound like a loving father? No. Football is a violent sport, played by violent people. Injuries happen. And for me personally, I can tell you that I made football an idol in my life, and I opened the door to the enemy taking that idol away from me. And so that, that's just me personally. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just being candid with you and transparent with you that that's the process that God showed me. That's the open door where I allow the enemy in because I made my entire identity was wrapped up in football. Let me tell you this. This is a freebie. When I say freebie, I mean it's not really involved in signs and circumstances, but this, this is good. <laughs> that anything that you create as an idol, it can be super good stuff. It can be uh, my, my identity is a father. It's a, it's a, you make your spouse a, a, an idol. You make football an idol. Football was a positive thing. It paid for my school. I made money in the NFL. It started my life in a good direction. But anything that you put above God and anything that you have as your identity, besides you being a son and daughter of God, if you put anything above God, you create an idol in your life, and that idol is subject to be torn down by the enemy in the demonic realm, and you give them access to do that. People wonder why they have such an attack over their marriage or over their children or over their job. It's because you begin to make these things unbeknownst. Sometimes it's so subtle, you don't even mean to. You think you're being, you think it's a good thing. I've heard people say, oh, my whole life is my kids. No, your whole life needs to be Jesus. <laughs> if your whole life is Jesus, you're going to be better for your kids. If your whole life is your spouse, 
That's not good. <laughs> Your whole life needs to be Jesus, and then you can be an effective and loving and more effective and more loving spouse if you do that. So I just want to kind of just throw that in there because it's something that, that has derailed so many people and something that derailed me and cost me a lot of time, money, effort, heartache, etc. Let's cover practically how God's voice is embedded and woven throughout your daily life. And again, these are examples I'm going to give you. That way you can begin to start engaging your faith and engaging God and hearing his voice and understanding signs and circumstances. And these are things that you can either make your own and, and, and begin to say, you know what, I want to experience you like that, God. And he'll take you through your own personal journey of that. So these are examples that you can take hold of yourself and that you can practically understand, okay, when I see this, you know, what are you saying about this, God? And you'll understand, you'll understand what I'm talking about as I go through these things, but understand these are things that you can graft into your life. When your daily devotional speaks to what you're currently going on in your heart and life, we've talked about that several times, but that's God speaking to you. And then maybe the Maybe the a right song comes off the right time in your car on the radio and it begins to speak to the circumstance you're going through, your heart condition. And you've heard the song before, but the day, that day it takes on a different meaning. That's God, that's God speaking to you through a circumstance. And let's say you have this day of devotional, then you hear this song, then you hear the same song at church on that Sunday. That's God continually on this theme of what he's speaking to you in line with these circumstances are signs that you've relationally and practically been experiencing with him. So it'll be often a, a, a flow or a theme of something God is showing you. For instance, I've had God speak to me, go to Psalms 34, and I read Psalms 34, and it was talking about how sweet God is. Taste and see, taste and see how sweet I am, how good I am. And it's literally, it was like for the next week, I saw it in my daily devotional. I saw it on people's t-shirts. I, they sung a song at church that was talking about how sweet God was. And it was all God's theme of showing me how sweet he is and how good he is and how I need to receive that sweetness and that goodness. Because I was going through a very challenging season in my life at that time that was hard or bitter, if you might say. And God was giving me the anti-type to that and giving me a theme of how sweet he is. And this is not going to be forever, son. I'm taking you out somewhere better. You may sense God using a movie or a TV show you, or something you watch or hear or listen to that you think it's speaking to your circumstance. And oftentimes, if you think God is speaking to you, he is. Just count his, his activity until you can prove otherwise. <laughs> it's kind of like innocent until proven guilty, which is probably not that accurate these days, right? <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. At the, same, at the same time, it's like to say, this is God until I can prove otherwise. Let that be your heart. This is God. God is, this is, this is good. This is God. This matches activity. This is Jesus until I find out otherwise. So if you do that, most of the time you're going to be super accurate. <laughs> Scriptures, phrases, themes, you know, numbers keep presenting themselves in your daily life. I call it coming up. This is, keeps coming up in the spirit. Let's say it's a, like numbers on store receipts. I've seen God speak through prolifically through license plate numbers, or you see a, a number on somebody's T-shirt. Or a friend of mine the other day was like, yeah, man, I keep seeing this, this number, and it was showing up in my fantasy football stats. I mean, God will use anything <laughs> to speak to you if you just have eyes to see and a heart that's open to receive. Even he might be speaking in Scripture to you, and then you see it come up on your social media feed. Somebody's talking about it or somebody has a little meme with that scripture. God is confirming that, hey, I'm listening to you. I'm here with you. I'm actively watching over your life. It's, it's this whole thing of, of constructing all these confirmations and let you know, hey, you can't see me and touch me tangibly, but you can experience me. And when you begin to take on the some of these experiences, God becomes so real to you. God is as real to me or more real than my wife, than my daughter. People I actively, tangibly touch, interact with every day. God is more real, and the encounters you can have with them are more supernatural and, and, and touch more levels than any people relationship that you can ever be in. 
So I just want to encourage you to begin to count these signs and circumstances. Certain animals God speaks through. It's amazing when me and my wife were going home after getting married, we were going home to Corpus Christi at the time, and we saw all these falcons, like literally between Austin, Texas, and Corpus Christi, four and a half hours, we saw 30, 40 falcons, and they were all posted on these lights. And I say, okay, God, I keep seeing these falcons. What are you saying? And he quoted Jeremiah to me that says, I'm watching over my word. I'm watching over you and Leah to perform it to I'm watching over your marriage. So lean on me. And I tell you, there's so many times when we're going through life together where life seems hard. And I'll remember those Falcons. And sometimes I'll, I'll, her and I'll have had a heated discussion <laughs> and I'll, I'll go out of the house and then I'll see a Falcon on my drive in to, to my job or a drive in to wherever I'm going or whatever, whatever the case may be. And I'll see a Falcon and I'll got to remind me, I'm watching over my word before I'm watching over your marriage, love her. Well, if I need to repent, I repent. If I need to forgive, I forgive. If I need to, to tell her and apologize to her. That's what I do. There's, there's times that I've seen a Falcon and literally I'll call or text my wife. Hey babe, I'm really you know sorry. I wasn't acting like Jesus. I apologize. Or maybe sometimes she didn't even know that I was irritated with her. I'll just call and send her a text and say, you know what, honey, I love you so much. And just, Lord, what are you saying that I should tell my wife? And he'll help me write the text. <laughs> that always works out good, gentlemen, by the way. Ask Jesus what he's saying about your wife and then text her accordingly. I have never seen that fail ever. <laughs> And also with my wife, there's this whole mystery of threes, which I can't get into the whole thing. But for instance, this mystery of threes, Jeremiah 33, three says, call to me and I'll show you great and mighty things you have not known. So when I met my wife, God had been speaking this scripture to her and it was significant to me in my own life. The night I was, I met her, I had a three on my arm, just a polo shirt I had, had a number three on it. So we decided we and we under we started talking and different things like that had the you know the the typical chemistry and things and we felt like God was saying this is the person I've set aside for you and there was this whole mystery of threes when we sent out our engagement invitations we used a forty percent off coupon and we saved three hundred thirty three dollars and like sixty four cents God well, I said God what are you saying in this He's saying I'm watching over I'm approving of this marriage we went to get our marriage license we were just tooling around that day and went down to the, the, the courthouse and we were getting our marriage license. And my wife goes, Hey babe, look at the time. It's three thirty four PM. We get our marriage license back timestamp three thirty three PM. <laughs> Jeremiah 33, three. And in honor of that, we got married at three thirty three PM. Gracie, our little daughter popped her head out into this world at three thirty three AM. What is God saying? God's saying, I'm watching over Gracie. This is, I've ordained this marriage. I've ordained this, this child that you're bringing into the world. I've ordained, I'm watching over my word. I'm watching over your family. My fingerprints are all over you, Sterling. Trust me in it. I'm telling you, that has been such an encouragement because we all go through times that are, that are challenging and they make the times that are challenging bearable and bring comfort. And the times that, man, things are going great, they add even a more sweetness because you know, personally, you're known by God. That's an amazing feeling when you go from mental descent to heart level knowledge that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know God personally. He lives inside of you. You hear his voice and you have, I have thousands of of little God confirmations that have been interwoven into this gigantic tapestry of his love for me. And God has the same thing set aside for you. Actually, your tapestry is probably already like pretty gigantic. You just haven't been aware of it. <laughs> There's time to look back at my life like, man, God was working there. I didn't even know. I thought it was luck. I thought I was lucky. Hey, look, if something good happens to you, don't go, man, I got lucky. No. You got blessed. <laughs> that was Jesus. <laughs> so dreams that can speak to your circumstances. There was a time that I was praying for my father in love and I was praying so vigorously for him in my truck. And I was just believing for and contending for some things he had going on in his life. And his last name is Star, S-T-A-R-R. -R. I'm behind an 18-wheeler and my I, I shipped over into the lane. And right after I got finished praying, 
the back of the truck was Star Transport. <laughs> I said, okay, God, what are you saying? And he said, certainly I hear your prayer. Keep praying, keep pressing in, and breakthrough is coming. That's a way that you, and God will, he'll use all kinds of things. You just got to have a, a eyes to see and ears to hear and intentionally and relationally start to celebrate the things that happen to you. I was in a financial, financial type spot a little bit ago in a, in a prior season I was in and I was tripping about my finances. I was like, God, I don't, we don't have enough money to do this or that. I don't know. And I just heard him say, son, I got you. And then I walk outside, I see these two doves, which stood, I knew stood for the Holy Spirit and me and Leah, and they just flew off when I went outside. And a dove biblically stands for the Holy Spirit. And I knew God was saying, I got you two, don't trip, don't, it's all right. And just a peace came over me and God used these confirmations and wove this tapestry where I was like, you know what? It is going to be all right. I just need to do the next right thing and hear God's voice and be guided and he's going to provide for us. And he has abundantly. <laughs> I want to encourage you to stay aware of the themes that God is speaking to you and understand that anything good in your life, celebrate it as God speaking to you and acting towards you when I had these circumstances happen. I said, okay, God, what are you saying about the name star? What are you saying about these two doves? What are you saying about these mystery of threes? And then God would kind of download to my heart. I would have an inner impression of what he was saying. And then he would lead me forth in additional confirmations. And there's sometimes that will follow a flow of confirmations and you know, you'll have peace about it. And maybe God spoke a little bit something to you but you're not sure exactly the path you should take. If you keep following him relationally on a daily basis, let's just say there's two decisions you need to make about a business deal. Oftentimes I'll say, well, I, I'm not really sure what I should do. And I won't have an inner leading. I'll be like, oh, they both seem pretty good. And I'll just get the feeling, follow me, I'll show you. And so often one of them will get taken off the table and then I'll have peace towards this one and this one, just through circumstances, got taken off the table. But what's, what's important is, is that you relationally connect with God as you experience signs and circumstances and ask him, hey, God, what are you saying here? What are you doing here? Where are you in this? Even if it's a negative type circumstance, God, where are you in this? I know you're not causing this, but where are you in the midst of this? What are you saying about this? How do you want me to respond to this? That's super, super important. The good life the good life, good things in life can often be in contrary to God's best for your life. Let me give you an example. A new job pops up and it's more money, it's more pay, a new company. And right away you think, oh, this must be God because it's a circumstance. But then you don't pray about it. Well, you don't know what's going on with that job don't just take the first thing that comes to you. Pray about it and say, okay, God, what are you saying about this circumstance that's popped up, this new opportunity? And so many times, you know, God might say, okay, this is for you. This is a good season to transition. Or you might not have peace about it. And God's like, uh, that's not for you. Well, you don't know what's going on that, at that situation, that job. I've had people that had job offers that were more money, but they so chose to stay at the company they were in because they knew how to discern time, season, and circumstances. And they asked God, God, what are you saying about this opportunity? And they didn't have peace about it. They felt like God was saying, no, don't, this is not for you. And then six months later, they find out that the company was embezzling or it's not a good place to work. It's in a healthy work environment. And over time, the circumstances that happen over here reveal why God said, nah, that's not the best for you. So make sure when you, no matter if it's a good, bad, and different circumstance or sign, make sure that you say, God, what are you saying about this? What do you want me to do? It's, it's really important as you go through life and make these decisions that you're able to discern. And, and as you do this more and more, it'll almost be like breathing. Like as I, as I go throughout my day, I interpret signs and circumstances almost subconsciously now because I'm so used to pressing into the Lord. And I'll say, and I'll just literally say in my heart, Lord, what are you saying about this? What are you doing here? And I'll be able to discern circumstances. But at first, this was very antiquated for me. It was hard for me to do it. It was, I was an intentional pressing in. And I was, a lot of times I was confused. God is a relational God. And 
And sometimes I'm still confused. Don't get it wrong. I, I, haven't, I haven't arrived. Nobody ever arrives. Like you just keep going until you go to heaven. <laughs> so nobody, if anybody ever tells you they got it all figured out, they deceived. <laughs> You'll never hear that from me. Believe me, I'm, I'm still hungering and thirsting and trying to figure it out with Jesus every day of my life. So, but he's, he's quickened some things and given me some things. That if you put them into practice, if you, if you put them into repetition in your life, that you'll get massive spiritual results. On to our activation question. I want you to ask God to bring to your heart a circumstance in your life that he wants to talk to you about. This can be as simple as you remembering a past memory or even something, an ongoing circumstance in your life that God brings to your heart. And it can be a flow of things that God wants to show you. Hey, I was really talking to you through this, this, and this. Or, you know, the, the thing that you were thinking about the other day, but you know what happened? It's this, this, and this. So then ask him to help you understand how the combination of these four activities work in the circumstances. So God's acti- what was God's activity? What was your activity? What was other people's activity? And what was the enemy's activity within these circumstances? And you can do this by asking God open-ended questions. God, what are you saying about this? Where are you in this, God? How do you want me to respond to this situation? What activities are at work here, Jesus? Is there something you want me to be aware of? And it's an it often, so many times I get like an inner understanding. Everybody has that aha moment where it's almost like you understand something you really didn't understand before. And it's almost like an internal knowing. Like, oh, I, I get that now. And you understand how something works. That, that so often happens and everybody's like, everybody's had that, those aha times. Like, oh, oh, I understand that. That's a lot of times it'll be something like that where God will show you, you know what? I was at work here, you were at work here, and the enemy was trying to work here, but he wasn't causing this good. He was really trying to come at this good. And you know, other people, they really didn't have, it, have that much to do with it. It was more of, you know, me and you. And you'll just have an, an inner knowing or a sense of what God is saying to you. And he may show you a mental picture as we, thought, as we talked about, a flowing thought. It'll, it'll be different, but I want you to journal down what you see, sense, and hear God is saying to you about, about this, this theme and what combinations were at work. And as you do this, it's gonna crystallize your filter that you see through, and you're gonna to begin to realize your creative process again. It's a, it's a discovery process of what's your creative process, how you hear God, how you discern signs and circumstances using these four type measurements. And as you do that, God is gonna to quicken to you how you personally need to connect with him and interpret, accurately interpret signs and circumstances. I, I, I know this has been a blessing to you. This has been such a blessing to my life. I no longer bounce around in the dark. I turn the light on. And this teaching that I, we taught today is a light. So I just pray that it blesses you. I pray for discernment. I pray for eyes to see, ears that hear, and a heart that's open to receive. In Jesus' name, I love you. Jesus loves you. We'll see you in session eight.